Good evening, everyone. My name is Dr. Abhay Shivpuri. I'm a consultant pediatric rheumatologist in Jaipur. I'll be talking about IgA vasculitis, formerly known as Minox Shonline Purpura. And let's start with a short case. Uh, a six year old boy started having non specific diffuse abdominal pain for which he received supportive treatment. Uh, over the next few days, he developed palpable purpura on the lower limbs mainly and also in the upper limbs, and he was diagnosed as IgA vasculitis and referred to us. However, over the next few days, his situation worsened. He developed multiple vomiting episodes, two episodes of melina, multiple joint pains, and severe pain abdomen for which we gave him 2 mg per kg uh, per day of IV methylprednisolone. His symptoms improved, the child was well, we discharged him and while tapering uh, his steroids, we noticed that his urine started showing proteinuria. And initially we started him on an ACE inhibitor in Alapril. However, the urine protein creatinine ratio was persistently above 250 mg per mini-pole uh, for around four weeks. And that's when we decided to have a renal biopsy done. The renal biopsy was suggestive of severe nephritis and uh, hence we ended up uh, giving this child IV cyclophosphamide he received six doses and by the end of it, he was in complete remission and uh, is doing well at the moment. Briefly talking about uh, IgA vasculitis. So the classification criteria, we know that IgA vasculitis is actually a tetrad of symptoms, a tetrad of involving the skin, the joints, the kidneys and the GIT. The presentation majority of these children are between the ages of four and six. Estimated annual incidence is between 3 to 27 per 1 lakh children. It's the commonest childhood vasculitis described. A quarter of them actually do not have a rash at presentation, and that, well, that's what makes it challenging at times to diagnose it at onset. Coming to the diagnosis, skin biopsy is not routinely recommended unless uh, the rashes are atypical and you're not sure of the diagnosis. Skin biopsy, if required, needs to be done on fresh lesions, which are ideally less than 24 hours old. Some of the indications of kidney biopsy would be severe proteinuria or persistent moderate proteinuria or a high creatinine leading to an impaired GFR. The differentials of IgA vasculitis would depend on the organ involved. So, for example, for the skin, we would say the differences would be acute hemorrhagic edema of infancy, hypersensitivity vasculitis, or other small vessel vasculitis. For the joints, it could be anything ranging from an autoimmune disease to a septic, reactive, or a transient synovitis. Uh, abdominal symptoms, the main challenge here is to differentiate it from acute abdominal emergencies, such as appendicitis, testicular torsion, or intersusception. Uh, we see steroids being used quite liberally for children with IgA vasculitis. However, the list of indication of steroids uh, is as follows. Orchitis, cerebral vasculitis, pulmonary hemorrhage, severe GI involvement, skin bullet or concerning necrotic areas on the skin, and severe muscle or joint pains. Steroids are usually given at the dose of 1 to 2 mg per kg per day for usually two weeks and then gradually weaned. The root may depend on the severity of organ involvement from oral to IV. Pulse steroids are usually not recommended or required for these children unless they have a severe disease. Renal involvement, 20 to 80% of children with uh, HSP or IgA vasculitis end up having some degree of kidney involvement and it's the most common cause of morbidity in these children. Uh, it's usually limited to minor urinary abnormalities with no clinical symptoms, child being normal, normotensive and having a normal renal function. Uh, often these kids actually do not even require any additional treatment. However, the kids with severe nephritis, up to 20% of them have a risk of progression to a chronic kidney disease. So I've uh, made this slide from SHARE guidelines published in 2019. Uh, the left table on the left actually uh, talks about the differentiation between the mild, moderate, and severe nephritis. And the flowchart on the right talks about the management of this nephritis. As we can see, the mild and moderate nephritis mostly required either just old steroids plus minus DMAT, such as azathioprine or MMF. Uh, severe nephritis, we should give IV cyclophosphamide plus minus pulse steroids or oral steroids. Uh, many of them often end up also requiring a maintenance therapy of azathioprine or MMF. Outcome and monitoring. Half of them have spontaneous remission. Relapses are quite common. 25% to even one-third of them actually 
have frequent relapses. Majority of the symptoms though resolve within the first one month of the disease and almost 94% of them completely recover by two years. What's very important is the monitoring. We need to monitor urine routine, urine protein creatinine ratio and the blood pressures every 15 days for six to 12 months. Thank you.